My name is Thomas Wallens. I'm uh, 34 years old and uh, I hold a Master of Science in Biochemical Engineering. And I currently work as a Senior Policy Advisor for the Environment for the Cabinet of the Vice Governors of the Province of Antwerp in Belgium. What this means? Well, I give advice to the political leaders of the province concerning ecosystem restoration, environmental protection and climate change. And the red thread throughout my job is nature-based solutions. Well, as an environmental policy advisor, my job comprises of many different assignments. My main task is to make sure that our vice governors, the decision makers of the province, the politicians, use fact-based science and objective truths in their policy decisions. For example, in the management of waterways, in the forest conservation and in the landscape management. On top of that, I also try to form a link between the local, the provincial, the Flemish and the European governments, as well as NGOs and the private sector. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm analyzing and developing new policy positions on nature-based solutions with a focus more specifically on ecosystem restoration. And this means making sure that our governments are working towards a livable, climate-resilient future by investing our forests, the waterways, and our natural areas. And to accomplish this necessary ecological transition, I work together with scientists and experts in the field, uh, with researchers at universities and politicians making the decisions on all levels, but also with the private sector and with the NGOs. I always uh, smile when people ask me that question because I will give an answer that mostly most people will also give. It's David Attenborough. He's one of the most famous and well-spoken science educators and documentary makers, but he's been a true inspiration for me because in his early career, he showed what natural wonders are on our planet. But later on, he became also an important advocate for restoring biodiversity, mitigating climate change, and also to protect those natural wonders that he showed so well in these documentaries. And one quote of Mr. Attenborough has stuck with me since the day I heard it. It seems to me that the natural world is the greatest source of excitement, the greatest source of visual beauty. It is the greatest source of intellectual interest. It is the greatest source of so much in life that makes life worth living. And that actually encompasses everything that I feel and why I work in the NBS sector is because it's, yeah, nature is nature. It has an intrinsic value and intrinsic beauty but it's also a really interesting source for our intellectual um, uh, interest and for our future technology and our future life on Earth. Um, next to that, I also have a tremendous respect for my late grandfather, who has shown me what it is to work with nature and respect it for its intrinsic value and beauty. I don't really have a typical working day, but I can give you some examples so you get an insight in how my working week looks like. But well, most of the time I speak, negotiate and work together with a lot of different stakeholders with different backgrounds. And to prepare those meetings, I research new scientific insights to incorporate in my policy advice. And I also consult with and steer our provincial employees. I follow up on the management of the entire environmental department, which employs around 350 people. And they have a six year budget. Six years is the, the timeline of legislation in the province of around 300 million euros. And, um, but one of my favorite moments in the week um, is uh, when I cannot go on uh, the terrain and visit one of our projects. I, I put on my boots and my raincoat because in Belgium it rains a lot. And I visit one of our river valleys where we are restoring the natural flow of the river or when we are planting a new forest and it's mostly in November, December and January. And I love forests, so I love going to those planting events. I also talk with our experts on the terrain and I try to follow up to make sure that the project succeeds and yeah, being on the train is one of my favorite moments of the week because I can really see the work that I do on paper really uh, rewarding in, uh, in on the terrain and really becoming something. Um, and in short, I have to filter a lot of information from different experts, from partners. I have to summarize it and communicate it in a way that my bosses, the politicians, the vice governors understand it in an order to make sound decisions. Um, during my working hours, but also in my time as a local politician, I give webinars, I make presentations, and I write articles to communicate about how NBS and ecosystem restoration can help us, society, transform towards a durable and environmentally friendly future. It was a difficult question uh, to find a good answer to, and I really had to dig deep in my memories. Um, but when I was around 12 years old, I actually did not really know what subjects to choose. One thing was for sure, I had an urge of wanting to know how natural processes work and how I could learn and influence those processes. So I therefore chose science in high school without really knowing what it was going to be. 
but it gave me a good understanding of the basics of how our natural world works. After that, I went to university and I studied the Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Master of Science in Biochemical Engineering at the Catholic University of Leuven. And complementary, I also followed a course uh, called Water and Climate Engineering at the Technical University of Delft in Holland. After my graduation, I uh, worked for a few years in the biomedical sector, but I, I always had the feeling that it was not really my true passion. Um, my parents wanted me to, to uh, pursue a career in the medical sector, but it was not really what I really felt uh, doing. And that because every day after work, I was reading up on climate change, on deforestation, on biodiversity loss, on water issues, and actually also sometimes during work. And I felt deep down what I've always felt. I want to give nature a voice in the political debates and be an advocate for the natural approach. Um, next to that, in my free time, I also followed an intensive education to become an alpinist, a mountaineer, and Nature Friends International. And when I'm in the mountains, it really helps me to truly connect with nature. Because standing next to a massive glacier, it really makes you feel small and humble. And it makes me realize that we are not the guardians of this planet, but we are its guests and we have to learn from the natural world and treat it with, with, with respect. I don't think I would change something um, because during the process, from being a 12 year old, not really knowing what to choose, but really feeling the urge of like, I want to know how, th how stuff works, how our natural processes work and how you can influence them. I think I chose the right path. I chose a science education in high school because, and, and it gave me a really good understanding of the basics of science. But it doesn't mean that you cannot do something else afterwards. So it's still really an open education. And now with my Master of Science in Biochemical Engineering, I started in the biomedical sector. But yeah, I, I, I learned that the biomedical sector didn't really give me the true passion and that I couldn't invest all of my time and effort and emotion in a, a job in a sector that wasn't really mine. So actually, it really learned me that I really should go for my passion because it will keep me motivated the rest of my life to work for it. And so I don't think I would change uh, my study or career path. Um, in my free time, I, 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 I try to climb some mountains in the Alps and uh, in other places. And that really helped me inspire, um, I'm sorry, that really helped me um, to realize the power of nature and, and that we are the guardians of this planet. Uh, that we're not the guardians of this planet, but we are its guests and that we really have to respect nature what it is and use it to our benefit. Uh, nature uh, provides us with a lot of different solutions. Um, so being an alpinist, climbing those glaciers, climbing those mountains, being in contact with the true wild nature, it really helped me understand um, that it was a job that I wanted to do. So it took me uh, around four years to become an alpinist. Um, and during those, during the course of that education, I learned how to read maps. I learned how to use compasses. I learned how to read the weather, learned how to read nature. Uh, I learned how to, uh, technical, um, equipment works in the, in the mountains. I learned how to save people when something goes wrong. Um, I also learned how to work together with people, with a lot of different people with different backgrounds and different levels of experience in the mountains. And that really helped me, um, develop my skills. Uh, that I can now use in um, in uh, in my day-to-day uh, -day job. All my colleagues are specialized in different topics. Uh, I have a colleague who specializes in mobility. I have a, a colleague who specializes in communication. I have a, uh, a colleague who specializes in spatial planning and building permits. So they all follow their their own different path, but the main con uh, main consistent. Um, Thing, that element that connects us is the drive to influence um, politics, to influence decision making based on a scientific and objective um, ground. Um, so we make decisions not based on emotion, but on a rationale, and we can really uh, let our society improve uh, every step of the way. So we don't. We all have different backgrounds, but we have the same common goal, and that's really what connects us. A really important skill is active listening in the cabinet. Also social skills, collaboration and people management. It's because since I work with a lot of different stakeholders with many um, backgrounds and expertise, I need to show to them that I listen carefully to what they say, what they want, that I understand what they're saying, but I also keep into account their emotions and make sure that they're happy with what we discussed after the meeting. 
So in general, I call this management of expectations, and it's a really important part of the process of listening to people, talking with people, and working on projects together with a lot of uh, many stakeholders. Uh, another group of um, professional and personal skills that I think I use um, is critical thinking and problem solving. Because one of the main things I learned in engineering school was to keep an open mind and be a critical thinker. Always make sure that you understand what you're reading or what people propose to you. Don't always assume from the start it is correct or it is what you're looking for. Think for yourself and don't be shy to ask questions which help you to analyze the proposition. So critical thinking and problem solving are really important skills, also in the day-to-day -day life, uh, but also in the cabinet. Um, negotiation and persuasion. persuasion. Well, I have to persuade politicians, which is not an easy job to do. But for that, I use uh, different types of techniques. Um, it's presentation techniques, writing techniques, but also nonverbal communication. Um, because I need to communicate the intention of a policy proposal that I wrote in a clear way so experts, politicians, and civilians understand what it is about and what effect a certain policy measure will have. So communicating the science, the science behind it, the policy proposal is really, really important. And while well, working at a cabinet as a policy advisor, it's quite a high level. Uh, it, it, um, it takes a high level of stress, of physical and mental strain. And in order to keep it balanced, I really have to manage my time carefully. So strategic planning, time management, and delegating tasks and leadership is really important because um, I shouldn't be shy to delegate tasks to our employees. I shouldn't be able to follow up on everything because it's impossible. You have colleagues for that. And leadership is not only influencing or steering a process by giving orders, but mainly it's also finding the right people that you can trust to do the job for you and to do it well for you. So I think those are the main um, personal and uh, professional skills that I use in my, in my job. I noticed that as an engineer with a broad scientific background uh, and as and a skill set, it as mentioned above, it's um, well, you can work in almost any sector. You can work in governmental institutions where you can work on managing certain ecosystem restoration projects or on coordinating and writing environmental permits, advising local municipalities. You can do a lot in the government. You can also become a politician yourself or you can start advising politicians like I do. Um, you can research. Or, uh, or teach to inspire the next generation of our future scientists or engineers. But also in the private sector, we have a plethora of uh, possible outcomes like product development, consulting in the pharmaceutical sector, or even starting your own business. So what I would recommend is like a broad scientific background gives you a really wide career path and many ch um, things to choose from. And yeah, I've noticed that an engineer is really um, well equipped to handle many different uh, tasks. Harnessing the power of nature is an extremely potent approach to deal with biodiversity loss and changing climate. But the main challenge is it is still not widely used and accepted by our politicians and companies. Instead of restoring our landscape so we can give nature a chance to help us, and mostly what nature, how nature helps us, it's for free. It doesn't cost any money. The politicians and companies mostly still invest in hard infrastructural solutions in concrete. And most of the time, they're very expensive. They take a really long time to be implemented and they're not always very effective. And this is partly because society is not fully aware of what MBS is and what they can do. So my main challenge in my job is to make sure that the decision makers, the politicians, the companies, the people, the civilians are aware of nature-based solutions and ecosystem restoration as a really powerful tool to help combat climate change and prevent biodiversity loss. My main advice would be like, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of taking a step in the unknown and really don't lose faith. You will reach your goal when you persist. For instance, uh, we have an example in our province. Um, one of the project coordinators of our river restoration project, the Grote Neta, well, he started to become a musician, but he always had an interest in nature in his free time. And after working for five years at the university, he decided to switch careers and focus on learning more about nature and science and he applied for the river restoration job. With his background as a project manager in the music world, he had enough skills so he could do the river restoration project job. So it is never too late to choose a STEM or an NBS career. But to have the most chance, I would advise studying something like engineering with a broad scientific 
uh, background, it gives you a really broad understanding of different scientific fields and a wide array of possible career paths. But mainly remember, passion, commitment, and hard work are essential to achieving your goals and dreams. And you have to be invested in what you do and try to aim to become the best. And those things can only happen when you're doing a job that you really like, that you feel passionate for. So that would be my advice to, uh, to our future uh, STEM careers. Well, nature-based solutions, they are, like I said before, they are most of the time the best, the cheapest, and the fastest solution to many of our problems that we have now. To droughts or to uh, excess water and flooding, uh, to forest fires, to all those types, or to biodiversity loss. Nature provides us with techniques and tools that it has been developing for millions of years, way longer than we humans have been here on Earth. And for instance, one of the best uh, CO2 capturing devices, technologies, are trees. They've been developed for hundreds of millions of years. And we should really use those technologies and tools that nature provides us to handle with, uh, with our uh, current problems. And it's really for free. For instance, an example that I always give to, to civilians asking questions, why are you investing in letting a, a river flow naturally to meander through the landscape? Why, why can't it be straight? Well, when we let a river meander through the landscape, it has more buffer volume. There are more slow and faster areas in the water flow. So it's um, it's for the fishes. They can grow up there in the, in the slower parts. There's more space for plants to grow. Um, it will infiltrate more water in the, in the ground. So we are more um, um, secure against drought periods in the summer, which will increase because the last few years in, uh, in Flanders, we've had a lot of dry, dry periods. But then on the other hand, this summer was the whitest summer in history in Flanders. Uh, we had a lot of flooding also in Wallonia, uh, in the south of Belgium. And well, nature-based solutions can really provide with a solution there because a really big um, issue in uh, Wallonia was that there are a lot of plantations of monoculture trees. And they're, um, all, their, all those needles, they were mostly uh, needle pin trees. They cover the, the soil, so the water cannot really infiltrate. So when we cut those trees and we change them by broadleaf trees and give it back to nature like it was intended to be, like a natural forest, then the water will infiltrate more and we're more protected against flooding. And we don't have to invest in concrete or in big flooding areas. We just have to work together with nature. And most of the time, nature does it for free. So uh, that's why I think nature-based solutions are one of the most important uh, tools to our disposal to combat climate change and biodiversity loss.